And then Tabs picked up the gauntlet and ran home with it when 11 1 12 or something crazy like that. Picks and bands are started. And sure enough, Bane being taken off. Candy Panda. Fiddlesticks are removed from Mithy. Wow. First ban for, for support. That's that's a pretty good feeling for Mithy, I feel. This man that came in as a replacement for We Will Failure. Thresh also being taken away from Nif. At least you could say also being taken away from Dexter, I guess. He's, he was a very strong champion. Yeah, he was. So that Bane ban definitely targeted Candy Panda. He was six, he's still 16 and or 16.3 KDA on that champion because he's been forced into Ezreal last week. And of course, the Fiddlesticks, you know, it's it's weird because Fiddlesticks always fills these niche opportunities or these niche lineups and obviously can be very strong like the Fear. The Silence is just ridiculous to go up against, not to mention the Ultimate, which has such high base stats that you can you don't even need to build AP to really do damage on them. Javan also banned out the final ban, so two junglers effectively banned out by SK this time around. So they fear what Dexter brings to the table, what the Lemon Dogs want as their first pick. What are they going to throw in there? The fact that they've left Twisted Fate open for Nuke Duck. Cassidy possibly in there as a counter as well. So a lot of thoughts to go through the players' minds on this first pick. They left actually as well um, mm. Ryze and Kennen open for Zoro Zero to take, which he's been playing really well on. But we do see Leeson being locked in, which Dexter, he did give his, his try at. I don't remember doing that well in the game. I can't remember who he was up against, but it was the same week he played against Gambit and just destroyed them with Elise. But I don't know. It's, to me, that's not something that's necessarily first pick worthy because Herkybot doesn't really play Leeson. Well, the fact that Twisted Fate's in there as well. Like you say, Herkybot hasn't played, uh, doesn't play Leeson. The number of times it hasn't gone in there, but. Actually, no, no, no. I, I, have, to think, I have to think way back, way back Ooh. in the day. Um, when Joe and I were casting like EMS or EPS before Elsus even started, we remember Herkybot was actually on a team. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. He was on a team with Haydal, and he played Lee Sin. And we were casting it, we were like, we were amazed because he was just as good as Diamond Prox. Like, we mm. even heard of the guy at the time, but he played a phenomenal Lee Sin, but obviously doesn't play it too much anymore. Well, the picks and bands are coming thick and fast as you've been. Uh Requenting the past. Just think about good times. Jin Zhao, Rise being locked in. And then you saw immediately Kenan and Lulu in response. And now Zyra and Ash being locked in as the AD support lane. Or is it they're going to be the support lane? That's the question. Cogmore may be going to come out from tabs. No. Back to Caitlyn. <laughs> good old Caitlyn. But yeah, so he the thought Ken about it. So the Kenan and Lulu, since we'll, we might as well go back to them real quick, is that Lulu is actually a very strong support nowadays. I mean, it always was. It never really wasn't bad at all. It's just the whole fact that you have their slow, which is really dominating. The stealth detection, if you want to get that on the right target at the right time. And then, of course, the ultimate to use on a cannon when he gets into the middle of the team, or even Zed, or even uh, Lee Sin. So you have that nice knockup. The fact that they did get locked in, Nuke Duke on. Zed, once again, was bad against him the other week. Like I said, and he pulled out talent. But look at that. Ocelot on Fizz. And he's using teleport. So we see most fizzes that, or well, when we ever see fizz, it's usually barrier ignite. But it mm -hmm. looks like he's running teleport ignite to really interact with some other lanes. But we've seen a lot of fizzes do very well. Nuke Duck in particular. I mean, you're, you're probably going to say tabs at some point in this game <laughs> on that champion. But we Wrong seem to do, team. yeah, we seem to do really well on it. And that champion can do very well. It's just about if you feel confident in your lane, can you really go up against that champion? And I'm pretty sure also he's going to feel confident going into this. Yeah, these are definitely interesting times for them. We've seen Herkybot very comfortable in Shinsau before as well. Kevin, he's going to have his work cut out, I feel, if he's up against Zoro Zero. But Zoro Zero has been playing a fantastic Kennen lately. But Kevin, he's kind of the stalwart of SK for me. He never really has a bad game. Yeah, I'd have to actually, I'd have to 100% agree on that. I mean, I really cannot think of one particular game where he did bad at. And the thing was, like, back in the beginning of the split, he would actually, no, back in the spring split when he's playing Olaf all the time he was just a dominating force then we saw him bring out Rumble towards the end of that season then it disappeared out of nowhere and we finally saw him using it earlier on today which he did fantastic on it wasn't like the loss wasn't because of him uh, on that champion in particular and I was surprised to not necessarily see it just again but his, his rise I want to see how well he's going to work this one well I'm surprised to see that a little frayed mouse cable there from Kevin to surprise me but once players get so used to their peripherals they don't want to change them would be a bit of a problem if the cable snapped in between them. But it looked like it was a pretty strong one, nevertheless. So there are the teams on your screen, and we are about to get into the game as everybody loads in there. No surprise last-minute switches from any of the players as I look across. And we do see the Lemon Dogs. They are top of the league right now. Will they remain there, or will they go equal with alternate if SK were to pick up a victory? SK themselves... Desperate for a win right now. They do not want to be joining Meteor Makers on that bottom rung of the table. They're 8-13 right now 
and starting to really slip out of contention for those playoff places. They have to take victory. The blue team is going to be Lemon Dogs, you can see on your screens, and the red team, SK Gaming. Candy Panda returning to his roots on Ash, but alongside him will be a niff on Zyra, which is something we've not seen in a long period of time. Herkibot looking to maybe make a check here. Nuke Duck walking straight in. The rest of SK Gaming are actually close by. Will they go for a fight here? They're going to turn it around. It's going to be Nuke Duck to catch on. The 100% crit coming out there. Will it be enough to finish him off? The Ignite is there. Ocelot picks up the first blood. Dexter, the next focus. Ignite goes down on towards him. Will they get on towards him? Zoro Zero, Zero taking very low here. Candy Panda didn't quite have the volley available, but that was a great start for SK Gaming. I got two words for you there, Demon. That crit. <laughs> I mean, that's completely what set that off. Critting uh, New Duck right away, then following up with the entire team. Kevin, he played that perfectly. You saw what he did. He was in the bush, and then he ran away. Like, he's like, all right, guys, they're coming. I'm going to bait them in. I'm going to bait them chase after us and commit to this. Then we're going to turn it on them and just kill them. And that's exactly what happened. First blood goes over to Ocelot, who's now actually... What is he going to buy when he goes back to land? Because actually just buy a lot of health pots. So he didn't want to go for anything else in particular as he just picks up a couple of wards. But that gives him a nice, strong start against Nuke Duck, who doesn't have Flash, doesn't have Ignite anymore. It's great credit, but I want to give it to the right person. The Herkybot was the man in that bush. The little death bush. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, though, we did get the wards down. And no crazy aggressive wards. Despite the fact they got that first blood, everybody kind of backed away. So it seems... While well, we already had a kill, there's actually not going to be an invade starting out here. And Dexter will be starting off on the red buff. Herkibot will be on that blue buff, uh, aided by the bottom lane. It's actually going to be standard lane Metro as well. So let's talk about that straight away. This bottom lane pairing of Zyra and Ash, which is going to be cause Candy Panda and Niv, up against Tabs and Mithy, which will be Caitlyn and Lulu. So. Well, there's a couple of different ways we can talk about that. So, first of all, Candy Panda on Ash, obviously one of his one of his strong champions back in the day, and you also have the range slow. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll, as a range slow, so you have the opportunity to kite very well. However, Mithy, he's on Lulu, so you're not going to be able to kite against a person who has a slower spell than you. If that makes sense, it's a spell to make you slower than your volley does. So it's really hard for Candy Panda to run away from this team and Tabs. He's going to have that range advantage. He's going to be able to harass you very well, which Candy Panda has already been on the receiving end of. You can see Tabs does have a high pick rate, but I also want to... Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll just keep our eye on this one for the moment, see if they don't catch out. But I want to talk about this mid lane because we saw the Fortitude pot already used by Newt Duck at the start here. So going openly aggressive against Ocelot at the start, despite the fact he was taken down first blood. He wants to try and keep pressure on towards Ocelot. Yeah, and the really important thing is, actually the really weird thing is he's being this aggressive because he doesn't have his flash up. Like, I was expecting Hercule to maybe go for that level 3 gank to punish him, go for the easy kill. But even with that, like even with Ocelot getting the first kill, I think the flash is more important in this situation. And it's going to come down to, I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong here, that he can actually dodge the ultimate damage out of Zed if he goes on his playful trickshirts when it's about to explode. Because you can dodge Karthus ultimate. They knew Dexter was there. They're going to go in towards him. The Audacious Charge was there. They don't quite have enough to finish him off, though. And he does get taken very low there. Herkibot was ready and waiting to sneak in for that one. And that's taken him very low once again. But, of course, the lifestyle that Lee Sin has in his overpoweredness will just work its way through that one. I hate that shit. <laughs> don't worry. You and me both. We should make, like, a like a, a support group for Lee Sin's people who have been punished by Lee Sin. <laughs> Oh, man. But, yeah, it's just a strong champion. You can be very quick in the jungle. Dexter, who's already shown on, like, kind of assassin champions like Elisa, he can play them very well. So we're going to see how well he does on his Elisa. And great job of him to kind of counter any potential aggression that Herkibot was going to apply to that middle lane. And it allows Nanuta to farm up that much more in the lane, which, you know, right now, 26-19, he's doing very well with. Herkibot is still lingering in this mid lane. Did take the large wraith away from the jungle of uh, Dexter. But it seems he's going to back away. Let's talk about this top lane because we haven't had a chance to really look at it. We have just seen Zora Zero go back and get himself a second Doran's Blade. But he's up against Kevin on right. So, if I'm not mistaken, it depends on how Zora Zero and, and Kevin play this, that Kevin should be able to bit, uh, beat him in lane. The only difference is he can't harass him that well with auto attacks because he can be locked down. Maybe actually taking a good bit of damage there. But because of the attack range of Kevin, because of the spell range of Kevin on that rise, you can catch them with Rippers, you can get a full combo off and really punish them. So it depends. Is Zoro Zero going to play with the Shurikens and just kind of use that to harass? Or is he actually going for some auto attacks? We'll keep our eye on that one and see how it works out because last time we saw Kenin in that top lane, he farmed very well. And that was, of course, Soaz, but he just wanted to party after all. 
And it seems that nobody else wanted to join him. As it stands, Lemon Dogs, they are one kill down, which if you just joined us, happened in the opening minute of the match. We are five and a half minutes into the final game of the day here in week eight of the LCS. We do have a game, six games tomorrow, and Dexter is poised and ready to pounce in his mid lane. Bottom lane, that's where the damage is happening, and Nif gets away with just 20 hit points, but he does manage to take down Mithy with his plants. Wow, so... That was very close. Very good job by Nif right there to be aggressive, take the damage or the maximum damage that he can take. As you can see, how low his health really is, and gets him to kill. So gets him, a little, gets him his Felix stone relatively early on. And it's gonna make him not much more deadly in the lane where Mithy he still has his exhaust up. And and Demon, I'm sure I remember something. Last week, SK played against Lone Dogs, and also it was on Twisted Fate. Mm -hmm. He actually caught Zoro Zero at the top side of the map at the level one fight, killed him, and they got the early advantage. However. They didn't take advantage of that situation. They weren't able to punish Zora Zero. And right now, also, I got to kill on a nuke duck, and they're not punishing him either, because look at the CS lead he has. Yeah, they didn't go back. They didn't buy. They didn't do anything to really solidify that advantage. But they have managed to get this kill in this bottom lane. I think it was Ignite that actually probably finished off the kill down in the bottom there. Still less than ideal. The AD carry didn't pick it up. But as you mentioned, the fact that he's on Fizz, the champion that really wants to go for it once he hits level 6, which he has just done. We'll see how that works out for him, because he's falling behind in CS quite heavily now. Yeah, and he's got to do something about this. I mean, considering that Nuta didn't have Flash for the first three, four minutes of the game, he wasn't ganked once. Well, or he was ganked, but it was countered by Dexter in the end. And was that countered by the fact that he picked up that Fortitude part at the start? Well, he had it, I think, at the level one fight. And he used it to try to survive a little bit longer, if I'm not mistaken. And it didn't, it didn't work out at the end, but I mean, yeah, like it's a little bit of a deterring factor to have that health pot, a little bit extra health, knowing that it's really hard to gank, but still, that's a huge CS lead for him to have right now, and he already went for Hex Tweaker, so he's going to have the defense to survive the burst that also can put out right now, but Kevin right now doesn't know Dexter's in this top lane, they could go for a kill, he's level 5, and I wonder, is he approaching? No, he's not level 6 yet, so he won't be able to kick him out, but they could make something happen here. Ooh, nearly face checked in there, blue buff is going to be taken for Oslo, and Kevin actually so close to face check, and he's gonna go for the face check. He's gonna get caught out by that kick. Doesn't follow it through though, Dexter. Doesn't manage to get the other side of him. He didn't have level six either, so he couldn't have kicked him back in the direction of Zara Zero, who did have slicing mouse from ready to go. And right now, I heard you about his spot right there, and great ward by Nukta to spot or to really see him coming. And he's still just carrying along with the CS lead, up to 26 right now. You see Ocelot going to be going for Sheen as his first item. Picked up double door and swing just to keep that extra farm, um, or to keep the extra regen in lane so you can keep harassing. Also to survive that death mark that comes out of Nuke Duck. We see Nuke Duck going back and realize he's going to be picking up the blue buff. It's going to be the red for Herkybot. Let's see whether he moves around. There actually Ocelot's being gifted the rates as well. So making sure his farm gets boosted a little bit because he has fallen behind on Nuke Duck. We'll see how it works out between them. We are seeing Zoro Zero backing off, so he's about to buy. Kevin, meanwhile, is just going to stack out that tier of the goddess as much as he can. Tell a lie, Zoro Zero cancels his teleport, and that actually may well give Herkibot, who is sneaking into the bottom here without any coverage. He hasn't been spotted at all. But Kevin may well have just pushed the lane a little bit too much. Yeah, if anything, Herkibot's going to have to dive him under a turret, and that's not ideal against a cannon who could just stun you up for days right there. So he's just going to back away, play the smart route, go back to his own jungle, keep farming up. But right now, do have Dex just to come bottom lane. He wants to try to get in here to make something happen. He's going to be coming around the side. He will be spotted by a ward eventually. And Kenny Penna, he has ultimate available. So does Nif. Like, they have great disengage or engage if they want to go for it. It's just all about, can Lemonogs bait this incorrectly? I'm interested to see how the item builds will go between these two as well, because they're actually fairly similar paths at the moment, all they've realized that Dex is continuing to come around there and they both step away from the lane, think, yep, we have enough to slow you down and lock you up if you come flying in with those kicks, so didn't want to go for it. And as you mentioned, Ocelot, with that teleport, has not gone aggressive just yet. Yeah, so we've been trying to find like the identity of people who play with teleport, and like we mentioned before, Charu, usually late game split pushing, we saw Xpeke use it early. For, uh, for early kills. Ocelot, haven't seen him use it too much, but if I remember correctly, he is the type of person that would use it early on. And he just hasn't been able to make a play just yet, because look how far push Lemon Dogs are in the bottom lane. Well, Mithy, oh, actually, yeah, the arrow is going to catch on. Nif's second very low, but here comes Herkibot. Is it going to be enough to lock down? He's going to have to step on the trap if he wants to follow through. And sure enough, doesn't get in there. Herkibot not quite close enough, and that fight started just a little bit earlier than it needed to. Yeah, it was really unfortunate, but from that, if they do spot, no, Dexter's not in that top lane, so they can't really just rush a dragon down. 
And it's relatively slow game. Maybe we're 10 minutes, 30 seconds in right now. There's a little bit of a goalie for SK with those two kills, but we've seen them have leads before. We've seen them lose leads before, but like we were saying, before, or like we were saying earlier on, that yesterday in the in the match on the second day, they completely turned around their strategy. They completely fixed the problem they had, and they might have been able to keep that up because they're looking strong right now. Looking very strong. Lemon Dogs not worried about this. <laughs> Did they just stare each other down? as like, yep, no, 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 we're not going we're not gonna fight. No. See you outside? No, no, we're just gonna back off. <laughs> Do you say see you outside? That's the, the typical call out, isn't it? Step outside, son. <laughs> You want to go? Do you want to go, man? <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, they're not going to go at each other just yet. It'll happen a little bit later. But Candy Panda, I mean, I'm trying to think, how many Ash players do we see? Genja's one, Candy Panda's two, and I think Sneaky over North America is the only one that plays Ash over there. And the, it, the arrow initiate, like back in season one, she was the 80 carry to pick when you played her mm -hmm. mid lane because of that initiation. And people for, completely forgot about it, and you cannot, because that. Long range arrow for that stun that you get can completely set off a fight. It's pretty much the single handedly best initiate in the game. We just saw Dexter actually checking out, thought maybe that the dragon had been started off. Instead, they pink ward up the tri bush. Herkibot is still sticking around. He's backing off in the mid lane. Nuke Nook's going to go off. That's actually going to give a bit of freedom to Ocelot if he were to teleport into this bottom lane potentially. We'll see whether that happens or not. Maybe he's just going to keep hold of that teleport until. It's really, really needed in one of the lanes. As it stands, it seems the bottom lane is not going to be where the aggression goes in. Hokebot does start off the dragon this time around. Dexter had checked it just a moment ago, checks it again, realizes that SK are on it. Let's just see if they respond. This could be a huge pickup for SK to link their goal lead a little bit more, but this could be a huge detriment to them if they do get caught out. Dragon ordered half health, but here comes Asa. They're trying to hold, they're trying to pretty much secure this away, and they should be able to. Well, coming from the backside is going to be Nuke Dog. This is a dangerous, dangerous fight. They do manage to lock it up. They get on towards Dexter. That's going to be true. Stranglethorns bouncing him in the air. The Herc, sorry, Shark doesn't quite catch him on towards it. Asa is going to get caught out. The death mark will be enough to pop him down there. He goes down. Now it's going to be Candy Panda trying to get on towards Mithy. Can they close the gap? They do manage to get the audacious charge, but the rest of the team back away with a flash there. Nuke Nook's going to come in from the side. He may be enough to slow them down. Candy Panda being very aggressive still. Doesn't have the volley, but that was a one-for-one one jungler for mid laner. But the Dragon, all importantly, went to SK. And what a kick out of Texter right there. He's like, all right, I'm going to die, but Nuke, like you want a free kill? There you go. I'll kick him into you and you're able to pick that one up. But yeah, I mean, Dragon for one-for-one one trades. So SK coming out ahead right there. And also did get a kill over to Candy Panda, so look at their kill spread they currently have going on. As they have one on Ocelot, one on Candy Panda, and one on the Nif right now. But Lemon Dog's only one kill in 13 minutes through the game. But they still are pretty far ahead mid lane and farm. Kennen's actually, no, is actually pretty much even with uh, with Kevin in the top lane right now. Oh, wait. Bottom lane has really been where most of the action has been happening. We've not really had a great chance to look at this top lane. We did see Kevin had just used his ultimate silly to clear the, the waves, really. Zoro Zero and Kevin have had a bit of a farming session in that top, and it's actually pretty even between the two as well in terms of farm. Very close indeed. So I think it comes down to who's more effective in these team fights. Mm -hmm. And I think that is limited by time. So, say 30 minutes in. Zoro's going to be more useful because he's going to have that AoE stun, he's going to have the damage. But like past that point, Kevin will scale so hard, he'll have the tankiness, he'll have the damage, that he'll just completely out surpass Zoro Zero. As long as the rest of his team picks up a little bit of MR, they get a runic bulwark or something to deal with that AoE magic damage. Lemon Dogs are the ones that are trying to deal at the moment, trying to deal with the threat of Ash. Candy Panda doing a great job keeping that farming train going. And, you know, it's, it's effectively removed the early power that you have with Caitlyn. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that range advantage you have in lane is really hard to deal with when you're an Ash. I mean, you kind of, maybe they were looking for a 2v1 lane, since it's a little bit difficult, but they've been doing a great job dealing with that. And right now, Nuduk is trying to invade this red. Actually, he won't steal it away. Herkbot smites it, and they're not going to commit to it. But SK actually might go for an engage here. They may well go for it. Doosie just coming around the side. He's going to be Ocelot as well, so he's going to try and head off. But Nuke Duck's going to try and force him away. Uses that Living Shadow to get away. Herkbot had used his Crescent Sweep as well, just at the start of that fight. So a few ultimates were used there as well. Ocelot keeps his wave clear, though. But that tower's taken a lot of damage in that mid lane. That may well become a problem for SK Gaming as we start approaching the mid lane and you can see barely touched lemon dog's turret himself i'm really actually i was wondering like he hasn't teleported out of lane so it's a little bit interesting to see that new deck's been able to do that much damage to the turret but either way i mean that gives them a good start they could go for a gank middle take that turret they go for like a dragon or another objective off the back of that but we are 15 minutes in also it hasn't used the teleport just yet and we do have 
a couple of items come in. We have the Haunting Guys done for Zoro Zero. We've got a Negatron Cloak done for him, so it deals with the damage that Kevin's going to be doing to him quite well. Look over at Tap side, you know, that we were mentioning earlier, the early advantage that Caitlyn has. Kind of gone by the wayside, went Double Doran's Blade, Vamp Scepter, Pickaxe, so he doesn't even have an item completed just yet, where, oh, on Candy Panda's side, he almost has an Infinity Edge, but Kevin getting engaged on. Well, he's dead. He's dead, Jim. Yep. Teleport cancelled as well, and that was a pretty clean, convincing fight there. Dexter come in, slicing Maelstrom, followed by that kick. There was no way in hell Kevin was going to get away from that one, and that's the first time we've actually seen a jungler visit that top lane. They're actually still even in terms of CS, though. And also that, well, he's going to get, oh, actually, Nuke got going aggressive, trying to maybe finish it off there. The Ignite tick's not going to be enough. Will he try and finish off the burst, though? The, the bottom turret does go down. First turret of the game for SK Gaming, but I feel this mid turret, that is not going to last much longer. Oh, nice, he do it. Duke there by Nuke, though. Gets out of the ultimate from Ocelot, and now that turret is going to go down shortly. But in the meantime, SK they took the bottom turret away from Lemon Dogs, and they're still there. They're still pushing up. And look at the wards they have down. They are controlling any vision of anyone because of Nuke Duck coming down to help out. They're going to keep pushing this turret. They're going to keep doing damage and completely keep out farming tabs. There's two coming around the position of Nuke Duck. It was going to be Herky and Kevin, but they can't close that gap quick enough. Get the nice slow on towards him. The arrow not going to find its home. And it does mean that SK will have to let Nuke Duck get away from Nuke One. It's 2 1 currently, though, Lemon Dogs. They took that top turret while all the pressure was happening in that bottom lane. And it does mean that Lemon Dogs have that advantage in turrets, but not the advantage in gold because of that dragon that SK Gaming picked up earlier on. And the next dragon, I'm trying to think, will we see a major team fight break out there? That's obviously a little bit longer away, but it would be a good place for SK to have it since you have that code. But right now, you see, as you can see on the gold totals tabs, he's sitting on 2,000 gold to back with. So I was saying before, he's a little bit behind. I just didn't notice he had a lot of gold to spend in his pocket, so he's going to have the Infinity Edge done relatively soon. Around, actually, not as early as Candy Panda, but we'll have it done around the same time. And right now, Candy Panda, if he can build that IE and build some more damage, and then they start grouping up for some fighting, like if they get an ultimate onto Nuke Duck and say you, or also follows up, Kevin follows up, like he'll be dead. And it won't matter the farming that he has or the kills that he has. We'll see about that. We'll see who goes for it. Lich Bane has been completed by Ocelot, so that will. Give him a big burst in damage, which he's been looking for. If that IE does get completed by Candy Panda very soon, which there it is, just popped in. Uh, we may well see SK starting to be a bit more aggressive. The Dragon will be up in 20 seconds, of course, so that would be the ideal time for all these items to be used. Definitely. That's uh, as, as, as perfect point, because we never really talk about that too much in terms of the power spikes that you get from certain items. Like, the Rod of Age is done on Kevin. He's going to be very strong very soon. We have the Abyssal coming in for Zoro Zoro relatively soon, but Dragon is now up. SK are already, like, in position to take it here. And right now, I mean, you look at Tabs, he's nowhere in position to help out. You look at the top side, Kevin's nowhere in position to help out, and it looks like somehow well, Lemonade's going to keep them off a of Dragon. Well, more importantly, Tabs didn't go back and spend it. He's still sitting on that gold. He hasn't buffed up that item. And it'd be amazing if SK let Lemon Dogs have this when they've got such a power spike advantage. Kevin is now joining the fight. There's going to be the Crystal Arrow. He lands on towards Mithy. Herkibar goes in, uses that Crystal Sweep. They haven't quite got enough to smite down the Dragon. It is going to be Lemon Dogs to pick up the Dragon. Mithy goes down. He gets caught out and they can't let more Lemon Dogs get away. Candy Panda with a flash there, but not really landed. There's going to be a one going. It's Kevin. He's going to try and turn it around. He manages to juke a fair bit of damage and he does flash away from this one. Nuke Dogs got away. Will they let more get away? Dexter, though, he's been caught out. The rest of SK Gaming, they can keep pushing this bomb lane. They need to try and take more advantages of this big what distance. What are you doing? Nuke Duck, my god, he's going to take the blue buff away. Clever play here. He was going to go down and die, but instead, he's flashed off and he's going to steal away the blue buff. Crazy. I, I don't even know if that's a clever play, because he's going to lose an inner turret for this. That's completely not even worth it. I mean, yeah, you just knife away from Ostop, but at the cost of a turret? Well, it, you, you were going to lose it anyway, I'm pretty sure of it. I'm not too sure of backing off and running back there would have been quick enough. He didn't have home guard boots, so maybe, maybe it was quick enough. You know what? If it had stuck around, he probably could have took Ocelot down because Ocelot was very low on health there. And now he's actually going to take the red buffers away as well. Nuke Duck actually doing a great job. <laughs> oh, gosh. Just from him almost dying with the great escape taking double buffs. It's going to hurt quite a bit, not to mention XP-wise. and. Obviously, he's sitting on quite a bit of farm. He has 1,300 gold to spend when he does go back. We actually have 
Tap's going for a bloodthirst. He's just he's done a kind of spree. Cow yeah. the jungle, the whole jungle of SK. It's like you're gonna do that. Mithy's running through, going, oh well, you've done a good job here. I'll just ward it all up for you. Now he's gonna. Oh, Tap's getting caught. Tap tries to 90 caliber net away from that one. Gets quickly grasped up there. It is gonna be Ocelot. They gifted to Candy Banner had to use his barrier because he had just bought, gone back and got himself that bloodthirst. So suddenly there was a power spike of damage from Tabs. Could have done within a moment ago though. Yeah, he definitely could have for that dragon fight. It might have been a completely different story. But anyways, two to six, favor of SK. They have that gold lead. They didn't get the last dragon, but they did take every buff away from SK and a lot of farm in the jungle. And Lemon Dogs, I mean, we were expecting the next major fight to come around dragon. It happened. But now 21 minutes in with a lot of items being completed now. I'm waiting to see that next fight break out because Lemon Dogs, they have a very strong team of kind of controlling SK a little bit in terms of the ultimate out of Kennen, you know, the knockup out of Lulu, the slow out of Lulu. But SK, they have just such a strong, engaged team. They just haven't been grouped up to make it happen yet, just yet. They haven't had the opportunity to go for some team fights. Like, every time they go in for it, because of the mobility that Lemon Dogs have, they just can't catch them. So they, they fired the arrow, it caught onto Mithy. Mithy's like, well, I'm a support, I don't mind dying. The rest of the team, I mean, just look at Nuke, though, how quick he can escape. Lee Sim, well, we have all seen Duke videos of that. And Zoro Zero, once he gets that lightning surge going, he's a slippery little sucker as well, and you can't pin him down. So they just escape very quickly. There's not a great deal he can do about it. Maybe that's going to frustrate SK as the game goes on. I know it frustrates me going up against Elise Sin who escapes me every <laughs> yes. single time like that. But they just need to throw Nidalee in there and that'll just be done with it. Oh gosh. <laughs> just flip your table. I'm <laughs> done. I'm done. Um, but yeah, I mean, with all these items coming in, they should be able to lock them down eventually. Like, you can only run away for so long as Lemon Dogs or SK will just start taking objectives on you. And they have a decently tanky enough team with, you know, Herkibot. We saw him a little bit earlier on with that Crescent Sweep just in, in that Dragon Fight, just push everyone away. And if you can do that under a turret, if you can knock Sword and Lemon Dogs out into the middle of your team, you're going to create a nice play. Bottom lane, though, we are seeing Ocelot potentially going to get caught out here. We've got two members sat ready and waiting for him. It'd be great to check it out. We do see him getting caught out, throws out the fish. Is it going to be enough? The shark comes out. Nuke Dog uses it and jukes it very nice. He puts down the death mark. It's going to be Dexter that picks up the kill. Great job by them just to camp and wait for it. And they're kind of doing the whole thing that Fnatic did to SK way back in the spring split, the, the trilogy or whatever it is that it was of Kevin. And they catch Ocelot out. They actually might be able to push that turret down a little bit. And now they're applying a pressure across the lane, or the map, because they know exactly where Herkibot and Kevin are. They're not positioned to defend. Well, the ace in the hole was used to just put pressure onto Candy Pan to keep him away from that turret, but he doesn't get pushed off. But he buys Nuke Nook a lot of time to take half the hit points off that inner turret. And you know, despite the fact we're talking about how much they can escape, how much they can dodge out of it, they're doing a great job at split pushing and keeping pressure across every single lane. And let's not forget all the objectives they took away from Jungle off the back of that dragon fight. Yeah, and, and uh, Nuke Duck, he's... When you say his name, you never really expect, oh, yeah, Split Pusher, but he's actually been doing that very well for the entirety of the summer split. He's been doing it on Fizz quite a bit. He does it on uh, Zed as well, even on Talon uh, earlier on last week. And I'm looking at his items, looking at, you know, his level. When he hits that level 16 mark, which he's at now, no one can really 1v1 him. And that is really hard for SK to deal with, where they have to just group up and force a fight. Unless Candy Panda lands like a nice cheeky arrow across the map and then someone can kill him. Well, he did it before in Season 1. Let's see if he can do it here in Season 3. Cheeky long-range downtown arrow, which I believe you'd have seen a highlight reel of from Freak, I think it was. He went, oh my god, it landed! <laughs> I actually have seen that video. Yeah, I'll I was thinking of Tiny Zack! From, <laughs> from the first day of Week 8 from them. Lemon Dogs. Ooh, Dexter was waiting for Nif to come around and say, Yo, you want to plant a ward? Come and, come and plant one this away. One thing you're going to plant is your grave. Is <laughs> that meant to be Draven or what? I'm not too sure. If I knew, I would tell you, but I have no clue. It's like a pirate from Somerset. That's all it was. Nuke Duck clearing out the waves in this bottom lane. Ocelot tried to shove it out, but straight away Nuke Duck pushes it right back and forces Ocelot to stay around a little bit longer. It's a little bit of a farming spree again, Jason. I mean, who would have known in all three of our games we'd have a lot of farming going down, Demon? I wasn't expecting it at all. You didn't convince me. <laughs> you sound very convincing there. But I mean, we do have Dragon coming up in 10 seconds, so all that farming, it's going to come into effect right here. Is how well have you been doing it? Because you have to show it right now. This dragon's going to be huge. Every team's already heading towards it. Candy Panda, though, time. is not in position. New Duck missed time that one. We saw it. We all saw that one. He threw out those shurikens a little bit too early. It does spawn, though, and Lemon Dogs pick up a very quick and easy dragon. SK are like, we're ready, we're ready. Oh, bugger, we missed it. 
<laughs> you could say Nuketuck mistimed it, but I think SK mistimed it a little bit more because they weren't there. Uh oh, uh oh, slot. Uh oh, he's got a 42 pot running as well. He's going to try and play full trickster away from this one. He manages to use the shark. It's a good juke. Is it going to be enough though? I don't think so. It's going to be Nuke Duck that finishes the kill. But SK, they're going to try and take advantage of this one. They're pushing in the mid. They should just go for the turret, but instead they're going for the kills. And that is going to be a mistake. They're going to come around the backside of the mid. He's going to get focused on, but it's just a support going down again. Not really the key focus target. They want to get on towards this one. We see Nuke Duck. He's off split pushing as well. They get the inner turret down. So the outer turret can they get the inner turret because nuke dog almost certainly is going to get the inner turret oh they managed to flash on towards tabs they have caught him down now they could get the inner turret now this is turning into a good push press game can they keep going actually i mean they have zoro sort of worry about his ultimate's down they have nuke duck whose ultimate is down he's actually coming in into oh he's he's, not, he's, again. he's counter jumping he is the whole. going for it again taking the blue buff away he's not going to go for red this time though it looks like but he did get the turret down either way and he's still applying that pressure where sk they can't keep pushing because you can't send one person at him you have to send more than one so at least keeps him off of the inhibitor turret well he is going to back away he did get that inner turret so it's actually five four advantage sk despite the fact ocelot went down he was just a Simple. Oh, wow. oh no. Oh. He, is he doing it again? Seconds out round three. Ocelot's <laughs> not having any of it. You've done it to him twice. He's not going to fall for a third time. Maybe. No. no he's not going to fall for it. So, New Dog, I mean, he's just still using his champion and his kills and farm to his advantage. Like, he realizes he could just keep doing that. If anyone, more, or if any more, or more than one person comes at him, then he has. He's cancelled again. Oh, he keeps doing it. He's waiting, 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 waiting. Now he's found his prey. Dun, we need dun, Bruce Buffer to introduce dun, dun, this dun, because dun, this dun, dun. is round three right now. It's UFC Nuke Duck versus Ocelot. I got oiled up and ready to go. Oh! And Nuke Duck went. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting him to go in for that. I had the Jaws theme ready in my head too. But so he backs away, gonna buy up, and it looks like it's because they want to make a push on Baron. Nah, he had us on his hourglass this time around. That would completely counteract Nuke Duke's ulti as we were discussing previously in the other match. Yeah, Agreed. nodding and looking at me doesn't actually oh, yeah, help the viewers at home. Yes, I agree, Demon. <laughs> yes. Full out, fully outright. So he switches up, goes to top lane now. And Baron, with the Oracles picked up for both teams, 27 minutes in, approaching that 28 minute mark, is a very high possibility. And both teams realize that they're trying to keep that coverage. And SK, I mean, they're up in kills, they're up in turrets, they're up in gold. They have still a really, really strong team to make some team fights happen, but Lemonox, they have a really strong team of picking you off. Well, at least for, for Nuketuck, he can pick you off really well, and then they still have a decent team fight team. It's all about who can get the right position, because SK, you saw them take advantage of that. Like, they flashed in, or they had Kevin flashed in on that second turret to catch tabs and then picking up the kill. And honestly, at this point, I honestly don't know who's going to win this game. Because it seems that they're focusing so heavily on Ocelot that the rest of the team of SK are quite happy to start picking up when we've talked about Kevin. He's been kind of left alone again, hasn't he? And when you leave Arise alone, they're just going to keep farming and farming and farming and farming. And sure enough, that Seraph's Embrace is almost complete. The Rod of Ages is there. The Sorcerer's Boots are there. He's got a brilliant spot ready and waiting to go. But look at this on the bottom lane. Ocelot, he's shoved himself a giant wave. And someone from Lemon Dogs is going to have to react to this one. It's Zoro Zero, and Ocelot doesn't seem too scared about it. And the wave's gone. <laughs> well, he can clear it pretty quick. Yeah, and he's just trying to apply that pressure. He's trying to do exactly what Nuke Duck's doing now. We see the Astro coming. It's going to land. He's landing on towards Nuke Duck, but is it going to be quick enough? The stun timer. The rest of SK weren't quite ready to react. I got really excited for that. Well, it was a great arrow. But and for some reason, the rest of SK, like they were not on the same wavelength. Kenny going to go fire it. No, uh, I got him. Guys, team. Guys, hello. Got him. No. Okay. Well, Zero cooldown's going to be down for a while now, but look what he's actually building up. He has a chain vest, so he realizes the damage that Nuke Duck can do, and he realizes that if it's not going to be Ocelot anymore, since he has his own, it's going to be me or it's going to be Kevin, and Kevin has a lot of health, so he's got to get prepared for this, and he actually might go into a GA relatively early on. This is all about that initiate. Like, that's what really sets him up. Yeah, you're, you're, well, actually you're behind the damage compared to Tabs right now as he does finish that GA up, but as long as you survive long enough and your arrow hits the right target, it's not really going to matter about how much damage you do have. I'm just looking at the body language of SK Gaming in that red rectangle, red corner. Huh? There's a rectangle, I suppose it's a slight rectangle. All, rec all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Yeah, that's very true. There's a lot of wringing of hands after that, and it clearly uh, a bit of a misguided team communications as well. A little bit of frustration from the team. They realize that they are 
potentially ahead in this match. They see the 8-4 kills, they see the 5-4 in turrets, so they know them, they know them numbers, so they're going to have a good idea that they are ahead in gold. And it's, it's a dangerous time because they know, again, it's effectively bottom versus top right now, and it's a frustrating situation for them to be in as Nif tries to get in towards Mickey. Mickey's been called out a number of times, actually. Three deaths, but... They just can't seem to close games out. They can't seem to beat their opponents into effectively making them make those tactical errors. And Lemon Dogs, every time they do get caught out, they gain another advantage from it. Right, yeah. And I was actually thinking about this a couple weeks ago, is that SK, they can seem to close out games better when they're just barely ahead than when they're ahead 10,000 gold. As if you think back to them versus Fnatic, where they had a 20,000 gold lead and still got three or four Barons. And right on the situation, like, they can win this game. Like, either team can win this game. It just comes down to that one point because death timers are starting to get very long. You're approaching the 40, 50, even one minute mark right now uh, with people's levels at this point. And SK, they realize it. Lebanon, they realize it. You see the Astro come out. The arrow lands on towards Tabs. Is it going to be enough? Perhaps the pop barrier instantly. Is it going to be enough? Zora Zero throws out the slice of Maris from Kevin's taken very, very low from this one straight away. Kevin is dropped. Ekubot goes down as well. Zoro Zero, he's going to get locked in. He will be also on picking up the kill on towards Zoro Zero. Can they turn this one back around? He gets another one. Gets straight in there. He's midi the drop. Candy Panda is still alive in the back there with the Guardian Angels. But it was a three for two. An advantage to Zoro Zero. It's like I felt the splash of that. This ultimate coming in right there. That was just really... Unfortunately, not well done for Washington. Well, it was really well done by Sora Zero to really zone us and stop that from happening. <laughs> he dodged it. But unfortunately for us, he did die. But it looks like they might be able to get Dragon off this. However, Dex just coming from the side. They do know he's there currently, and so is Comstabs. He is going to get caught. Is it going to be the Guardian Angels pop? That's the question. Will he be able to get away? Herkipot. Oh, he was coming. He's gone the wrong direction. He needs to walk towards him. And now we see Tabs actually backing away from this one. Guardian Angels, he's not too worried about wasting that one. They're going to get towards Tabs. Tabs taking very low now. He should get dropped off by Herkipot, but the rest of his team are going to come and support him. There's going to be the Hawk shot. It will be Tabs going down, and the GA is still available. There's the slow one towards Dexter. There's the audacious charge. The three talent strike will follow. He's going to get knocked up in the air. Oh, will he? No! Oh, he tried to get onto the Golems. Didn't quite miss time it right. And Herkiwop picks up the kill. Great little fight, but it's SK that come out on top. I want to know who who killed the big Golem, because the small one's there. The big <laughs> one's not, and he didn't know that, so he would have lived, I think, if he kept running. But instead, he tried to queue to it, didn't get away, and SK are still going to get dragon off, and they got two kills as well. Fantastic play out of them. Great little fights, and this is actually a really close engagement considering Lemon Dogs are 3-0 up against SK Gaming. That's the second dragon they picked up. And Ocelot, he finally gets himself the blue buff. Nuke Duke's taken it away a number of times. You can see he's got his own one on him right now. The red buff is back up as well, where Candy Panda's heading. So both teams are gonna be at full strength into the next fight. And we have to take we have to take a second, because you know we're gonna have a little bit of a lull before this next fight breaks out. Look at items. So we have the zone he's done for Zoro Zero, as we saw that last fight, how effective, how strong it can be. We have the Abyssal Scepter done for him as well, so he's going to have that extra match resist. He's going to survive really a lot longer against uh, the lineup that SK has. Haunting guys behind that, so he's a really high penetration built. You look over at Dexter, picked up the Runic Bulwark to get the extra match resist against the double AP composition. Zoro Zero is actually sitting at... How should four, or actually, 89 match resist right now, so when he gets next to uh, Dexter, obviously going to go up a little bit more. We look at the mid lane, nuked up. Last Whisper, Brutalizer, Hex Drinker, and Blade of the Rune King. So he has the potential to burst someone down from 100% to zero. However, also has Zonia's. Kenny Bennett has GA. Kevin has a Frozen Heart coming in. And we saw earlier on today just how strong <coughs> building armor is against that Zen. Top there, and we're going to see how strong it does work out. Saracen Brace has been using this effectively. What? Popped him. <laughs> how quick the death mark is. Now Ocelot though, he's going to use that playful trickster, throws out the shark, he will find his target. He manages to get into the bush, but he is going to get taken down. Ocelot gets revenge and the shutdown bonus. Great, and he gets another blue buff. He refreshes the timer on his. It looks like they're actually not going to go for Baron off this, but they do catch Mithy right here. This could be very bad for Lemon Dog. Ace in the hole on towards Candy Panda, but he's got that Guardian Angels in there. Stranglethorns will bounce Dexter up in the air. He's going to get caught out. The audacious charge kicks him back. It's not going to be enough. The arrow comes in. Candy Panda finds himself another kill. Mithy taken low. Ocelot smells blood. Goes in, gets it. Uses that Zonius. Turns it back around. Slicing Marist from Zoro Zero. It's going to be enough to take him down. Tabs picks up the kill there, but they straight away go back. And Zoro Zero got the kill back on. Actually popped the Guardian Angels on Candy Panda, but quickly comes back. Are they going to get any objectives from this one? That's the question. Well, all those kills are 4 for 2 fight. They have to take something from it. I 
wonder if Tabs can actually pull this one off right now. He's in a 1v3 situation. Is he just going to push or is he going to try to stop this Baron? And right now, it looks like he's just going to go for that push. And SK, I mean, they're not going to wait 30 seconds to let Ocelot get up. But still, having four members live with Baron, with the kills they just pulled off, they're now up, going to be or are going to be up over 6,000 gold. Phenomenal play by them to really turn this around. Because remember, they're down 0-3 in this series. And a big win right now against Lemon Dogs is a huge confidence boost. Well, Kevin nearly managed to sneak through there. But there was a ward in that bush that catches him out. That will be the Baron for SK Gaming, or will it? Because here comes Nuke Dog, he's gonna throw himself in there. Oh, doesn't quite catch it, Ace in the hole. Kevin's gonna quite easily take that one. We saw Nuke Dog taking him once though. Didn't fancy going up against a four-man SK Gaming. So, now, Baron for SK, 8,000 gold, uh, sorry, 7,000 gold lead, 16 to nine in kills. Let's see what they can do with it. They had seven wards down at Baron's even. That shows how much they wanted that Baron and how much they didn't want to let that get stolen away because they've had that happen in the past where it's been taken from them and they've been losing games from that. So showing that they realize where they go wrong and have been able to fix it. And last was going to be coming in for Candy Panda off of that. So he's already doing some pretty good damage. He already had the survivability with that GA. His damage is going to just spike up even a little more, especially since he's against that Zonies up Zora Zero who's trying to get this phase, trying to lock him down. Let's have a look across those items because... We saw how quick Kevin actually got completely popped by Nuke Duck, and that's frankly because he's not didn't have any armor. Now he's got himself that glacial shroud on there. Maybe able to prevent a little bit of that damage. I'm not too sure about too much of it, but it's clear to say Nuke Duck gets on someone. He will generally kill them if he can finish off his full burst. And you can see him in that top wave once again, trying to keep that split push going. But the rest of SK, they have that mid wave clear, and it's a clear route to an inhibitor turret, and they may well try and take it. And we have to keep in mind, when he went for Kevin, he popped his or, or he popped a Seraph's Embrace. So he had an extra thousand health shield, and he still popped him like it was nothing. That just shows how strong he is right now with the farm, with the kills. And that's okay. They still have to respect that. They still have to realize, you know, he can still do a lot of damage. We can still lose this game. But with the Baron, it's going to be a little bit hard for them to do that. And right now, they have also split pushing, which... I'm trying to think if it's actually worth it, because they have SK has a good disengage with the Zyre, with the Xin Zhao, with the Rise, with the Ash, but do they want to split push or do they just want to go for a five minute push into a lane and get an inhibitor down? Well the thing is that Nuke Duke was off then, they didn't really have vision of him once he'd pushed that wave, so they're a little bit fearful of him coming around behind him. And obviously Ocelot didn't have that teleport available. Now we're seeing the blue buff gonna get taken away. So this is SK's beginning. This is the first time they've actually started to take objectives away from Lemon Dogs take it off from their jungle. The blue buff goes over to Ocelot. Now they're in a good position to push on towards that inner turret with the whole wave coming towards them. But keep, they have to be careful though, because look what Zero Zero has. He's like, he's a cat in with a Lulu. You cannot really afford to go up against that. Like if they get a good engage on, if they get a little chip onto SK, they can win this fight very easily. And SK, they realize that they're playing very safe. They don't have a fantastic ability to siege these turrets down, but if we see a grasping roots land, I think we're gonna see a fight break out for SK. Yeah, and actually with trying to position himself. We did just see Ocelot was off the side as well. He was ready and waiting to throw that shark. Sadly, not the Earth, which we all love to see, over towards them. And instead, they're trying to keep their position, keep their calm as well, in all honesty, because they're in a position here to beat out the top team currently in the European LCS. And the rest of the teams will actually be cheering SK on here because they want that league to be as close as possible when it comes into Super Week. Yeah, that's very, actually, that's very true. I never thought about that way. The other teams want that to happen so they can close in on them a little bit more. But Dexter did back. And Nick Duck's going to show himself middle against Ocelot. So this actually might be the key for them to say, hey, we can take this turret. Yeah, and it's actually Ocelot going to go in towards Nuke Duck. Uses the Zonias, discounts the ultimate from Nuke Duck. Playful Trickster's wow. away. Very well played by Ocelot. He knew what he was doing this time around, and he had the weaponry to take down Nuke Duck. And that surely will signal SK to push on the inhibitors. They're going to go for it. That was a great job, Ocelot, because that was a lot of pressure on him. But the Astro comes in. Arrow catches on towards Zori Zero. Pops out Slicey Maelstrom, followed by the Zonias. That is tapped. It's gonna take down Ocelot. Stranglethorn's catches just Dexter. He gets bounced. He gets taken down by Kevin. Tabs is gonna be the focus. Barry is not gonna be enough to save his bacon, and he gets taken down. That's gonna be an inhibitor to it. And SK Gaming, after a three for one fight, will take themselves an inhibitor. This could actually be the game. They have 40 seconds on Dexter. They have 50 seconds on Tabs. They have Nuke Duck in 25. They don't have an exhaust or anything ready for it, but 
They're gonna have Ash Air up soon. They have minions. They can go for the win here, Demon. They're gonna see, and if they can finish it, they're gonna at least get one Nexus to it. They're gonna go back in towards Zora Zero. Remember, he's just used that Zonya's Hourglass, so he's not available. There's one Nexus to it going down. Have they got enough? They lock up Zora Zero. He's gonna get caught out. He goes down. Miffy, the last man surviving. That's gonna be the second Nexus to it. SK Gaming could take victory once again in a bottom versus top matchup. And Lemon Dogs, no, New Dogs back. Has he got enough? You can see Candy Panda gets locked up. They're trying desperately to take down the Nexus. They get it. SK Gaming have taken down Lemon Dogs. And it was such an important victory there for the SK Gaming crew. And it all started off with Ocelot taking down Nuke Duck in that middle. That Baron buff was so key. Some great plays from many members of the team. What a fantastic match to end. You're definitely right on that, because if Ocelot did it 1v1 Nuketuck right there, they wouldn't have got the inhibitor, they wouldn't have won the game, they wouldn't have snowballed all those kills at the end, and even Lemon Dogs look happy for our Nuketuck's like, yeah, that was, that was very well played, that's a very good game, and they take a, a, must, a massive win, just knowing that you're pretty much at the bottom of the table to beat the top team, to pretty much get yourself caught back up a little bit with Evil Geniuses to get into that top six place. They've got to feel good after that win. They have got to feel very good for a while. Interesting, interesting matchup, and we weren't sure for a while how that one would play out because obviously you've seen the Ash in there, who 6-0-10 Candy Panda on your screen there. You cannot deny how well he played there up against Tabs on Caitlyn, who's honestly been his bread and butter, and he's got about 66% win ratio before that match happened. That's definitely took a bit of a dive now. Yeah, and, and Candy Panda, the, for, for me, the real key is, is that he's shown couple, or for weeks now that his vein is phenomenal. Yes. And we, we looked at him last week saying, He's got to bring another 80 champion to the table if he wants to keep carrying SK like he's been doing. He did it today with that Ash, and that might be another ban that they might want to go at him with to keep him out of the game because 6-0 six, six, and 10 is, is a really good score, and the fact that he can do that with another 80 carry so quickly shows his strength. And again, Herkibot, 3-0-11 from the jungle. Fantastic play from him. Didn't get caught out. Kevin, honestly, he just kept himself farming in that top then. Kept the uh, multipliers, 2-4-6. When were the even numbers? Yeah, <laughs> two, four, six, and even in the consecutive even numbers too. Yes. And also, what SK did so much better this time was they killed Nuke Duck right away, mm -hmm. and they were able to punish him a little bit more. Not as much as you'd like to see, but the fact that they were able to do something about it this time instead of letting the person they kill right off the bat just free farm and catch back up in the game, it shows they've been really improving, really looking at their games, and really analyzing what's been going wrong. Improving actually, all you got to do against Zed is get single damage item, and then get get yourself as on his hourglass and play Fizz. And play Fizz. <laughs> play Fizz is another good counter. Let's go over to Joe and Quickshot to break down the last match. Thanks a lot, guys, and a brilliant performance there, Quickshot, coming out of SK Gaming, a win that they really needed. Yeah, there's no other word for it. At this point in time, they're sitting right down at the bottom of the table. The fact they picked that win up means they're now seventh place, so they are ahead of MYM. But what it also means, taking a victory away from Lemon Dogs, it's accelerated, I believe, alternate back into the first place position after their 2-0 today. Yeah, Aaron A was pretty happy about that one when he visited the earlier on and then stole all our drinks backstage. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron A. Um, so let's go a little bit through and uh, deeper into that game there. I mean, that whole new bottom lane coming out of the Zyra-Ash combo, it's not the first time we've seen Candy Pine play an Ash before, but... We've seen it work in North America really well, and it did the same trick today. Yeah, that's actually the winning combination that Cloud9 had been running for weeks 5, 6, and 7. And only just recently have they started changing that up a little bit because it's either being stolen or banned away. And basically, the control, the utility it gives you is unsurpassed in the game. And when you look at the rest of the composition, they didn't have too much CC coming out. You had Fizz in the mid lane. So to, to make up for that lack of crowd control, that's where Ash and Zyra come into play. And they played it perfectly. Zero deaths on Ash, and we said zero deaths for Herkubot Sinzao as well. His engagements were perfect time and time again. Yeah, and Herkubot's, it, it, for me, it's been a little bit patchy throughout this, uh, this summer split. I'm sure he won't mind me saying that either as well, that he's had some brilliant games like that, but also some pretty rough ones where he really should have been doing better. Now, uh, for SK's sake, that needs to be the return to form from Herkubot. And that Xin Zhao, for me, is his kind of jungler as well. I completely agree. And when you compare Herkubot this split to Herkubot from the spring split, he was making such big impacts in the early game, in each of the lanes. He was able to basically find and secure a kill within the first 10 minutes in, in every single game. And he simply hasn't quite found the jungler for him yet. But if he continues this type of performance, uh, especially coming into Super Week and, you know, with a couple more games, it's definitely going to help them out.
Well, let's talk a little bit about Ocelot there at the end as well. You know, bringing the Fizz to the table in this one. What are your opinions of that? I think he played his Fizz particularly well. And you've got to remember, he was, I don't want to use the word camped, but he was focused and, and singled out by the Lemon Dogs a number of times throughout that game. They kept sticking to him in the lane. And I know that Ocelot's a fan of Fizz in solo queue and online. And he managed to play it out. Uh, part of the reason they were able to close the game out there was because he was able to 1v1 Nuketuck. He was able to drop him down, pick the kill up, and allowed SK the 5v4 on the inhibitor, which then allowed the game win. So, well played, and I, I think it was a good choice. Well, very solid victory from SK Gaming. And speaking of Ocelot, he's waiting on the couch with shocks. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Ocelot, congratulations. And let's talk some more about that Fizz pick. And earlier in the day, the Zed pick, very clear. Do I detect a pattern here that you are opting for assassins more? Um, until now, since LCS started, even spring season, I've been playing these Orianas, Karus, and all the stuff that is very defensive. And I mean, I, let's be honest, I've never played that before, you know? I mean, I just got used to play it in this season because I thought my team is what, what we needed. Um, but I realized probably too late that um, Assassins is the real meta and it's actually what I love. So actually I would have been so much happier playing those kind of champions before. And uh, tell me a little bit about that Zed that you used versus Alternate as it didn't turn out that well in the end. Um, well, I, knew, I know that uh, Fizz against Zed is especially a hard matchup early game because you get poked pretty easily. And I know it's really tough, but afterwards when you get the Leech Bane plus Zonias uh, built, you can 1v1 him. Um, I didn't count with Lee Sin coming bottom that many times, so I wasn't able to speed push that much. They, they actually played that perfect, you know. They caught me like two or three times. Lee Sin was waiting there like a lot of time. It was really, really painful and I couldn't get fed earlier. But still I managed to get some kills here and there with TP, so it was all right. And talk us also a little bit about the Ash Zyra pick. As said, something we see a lot over in NA and um, Candy also play Ash, but why did you opt for that combination here and how, do, how well did it work? We don't necessarily thought about Cloud9 in this case. We, we watch every game, obviously, of uh, NALCS. But we, nah, it, it wasn't about Cloud9, it was more like in this setup, it, it really fit, because we had this good engage with Zyra, which is good corner engage and follow up as well. So it really fit, nothing to do with Cloud9. And it turned out really well for you guys. Now tell me a little bit about the atmosphere in the team, but of course, you were at the bottom of the table, you started at the bottom of the table, well needed victory here. But still, when you lost that first game today, then in between you guys were laughing and joking with each other, so how is it going in the team? We have very good friends and our relationship can't be better. So we're very happy being with each other. And right now we are kind of, we are not worried. I want to make it clear. We are not worried about dropping from LCS. Um, we are kind of worried about the fact that reaching LA um, is going to be hard, very hard. But we, don't, we, don't, we never give up. We train more than anybody else, probably. Um, we are pu putting ourselves in the best mindset situation. Slowly, we are more playing more like YOLO, like today. Mm -hmm. Even though we, play, we lost the first game, we are playing YOLO, going in and dying. I don't care anymore. I just want to, you know, win games. Um, Nobody cares about KDA, nobody cares about anything. We just want to win and go to LA. It's possible. It's very, very hard. Not going to lie to you. But still six games to go. And I just want to tell to the fans, I mean, keep faith in us. So finally, tomorrow, rematch versus EG from last week. Full YOLO. We are 1-2 against them. And uh, we have to make 2-2 because it's really needed if we are tied with them in the ladder. So tomorrow against EG is going to be a really interesting game. All right. Thank you very much, Asala. Thank you. Now it's time to check in one last time with D-Man and Jason for a look back at all of today's action. Thank you very much, Shock. So let's check out.